Hello, everybody. Oh, Don't hi. you clap. <laughs> we got a new face here today. Oh, first of all, welcome to the Smothered Post Session Podcast. This is number five, and I am Lawson, joined here with the new face, Lucas English. Well, hello. Oh, my God, that was perfect. We spent no, two sweet. hours rehearsing that. I finally did it. I, I didn't get it once right. <laughs> and, of course, Seth Thompson, as always. Our wonderful I'm director. Back. He's back. He's not going anywhere. No. 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 I think he might I live tried here. to fire him. <laughs> There's a bit <laughs> back. I think it might be his. Good luck. Oh, man. So let's, let's just check in. How are you both doing tonight? We just had a fantastic session. First session with Lucas here. A lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun with this. Playing a very authoritative character. Have you ever, have you ever been in, in quite a position of power before? Uh, like... In a like in a production, like as a character or like in real life? Yes. <laughs> uh, as Both. A, as a character, no. Um, I actually do. Uh, I actually do security work on the side for uh, like anime conventions and things like that. So for some reason, someone saw it necessary or reasonable to put me in charge of like five thousand people at Look, a time. Those cosplayers get violent. When you mm, deal with true. their anime. You have no <laughs> idea, man. <laughs> They're quite passionate. But that's <laughs> great. Um, so for those of you who don't know, if by chance you're coming into this for the first time and you've never heard of Smothered whatsoever, first of all, if it's released, go check that out. If it's not, go check out some of our other episodes to stay up to date on everything like that. But he's playing Police Chief Lance. And I have to say that... You seem to have a lot of fun with the delivery of specifically when it comes time to be tired. Now you work in production, right? You work in oh, you work yeah. in film, so you know all about being exhausted, right? Yeah, no. Um, normally, I work like props, special effects, art department things. Like, trust me, I know what it's like to be there an hour before everyone else and an hour after everyone leaves. Absolutely, tired is my up lifestyle. All the, all the props, and it's five o'clock in the morning. You went five hours over the allotted wrap time and whatnot. Yeah, bags under my eyes are my aesthetic. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's my go-to. That's how I roll. Hence, hence the yeah. hence the shades, man. Yeah. They cover the bags. <laughs> but uh, so you've acted before, as you just said. What has a lot of your experience been so far? So the vast majority of my acting experience has been through community theater. Um, growing up, I didn't do sports or anything like that, as this fabulous bullfighter physique can attest to. Um, for about 10, 12 years, I actually did community theater. And uh, yeah, I have used to do like four or five shows a year. That was like my entire thing. Okay. Are there, cool. any, are there any roles in particular that has, has stood out with you that you keep with you that you think that was, that was very special for X reason? Or just what are some of the favorite roles that you've done before? Uh, yeah, so one of my absolute favorite roles that I've done in the past was uh, it was a production of Seussical. For those who don't know, it's, it's like someone took all the Dr. Seuss books and turned them into a musical. Um, I love children's entertainment, and um, I actually got to be Horton the Elephant, That's which awesome. is the, uh, the main character of that show. Yeah. For me, it was like one of, if not the biggest part I ever got. I enjoyed the songs a lot. Notice and um, I think it was like one of the last shows I ever got to work on with both my mom and my dad. Oh, um, really? Like both of them were super involved, but I think they, that was kind of the they pinnacle. They act as well, or they're just involved in, in theater or, or the well, performing arts as well? My mom actually passed on a couple of years ago, and I'm, I'm kind of carrying that flame through doing props and set decoration stuff. And uh, my dad was super into building the sets growing up. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Mm. Where did you do community theater? Like, what area? Uh, so most of what I did was in the uh, Prince George's County area. Okay. Um, I was with, uh, the main group was Prince George's Little Theater. They actually just went on an uh, indefinite hiatus recently. Yeah. But um, a lot, there were a couple groups in, uh, in Bowie, some in D.C. All right. Cool. So a little bit of everywhere. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. What um, about this in particular feels different from anything you've done before, if it feels different from anything you've done before? Well, I've done a couple of professional acting gigs, uh, just like minor commercial things. I don't think I've ever done actual voiceover work before. Very cool. Yes. So that seems to be a recurring that's thing. That's a consensus. Yeah, here, yeah, that seems to be a consensus, which is awesome. Yeah. It's, just one, of my, it's one of my personal favorite uh forms of of performing and whatnot i think that it's a lot of fun obviously because we're we're doing this but <laughs> what uh what are some of the people who you who have inspired you or that you've emulated when it comes to this particular role 
Is there anybody that comes to mind? So it's it's a little bit of a combination of a bunch of things. Um, for me, like I love listening to like the old radio shows, which is part of the reason I was so excited to get into this. Like uh, especially loved like Dragnet. So Sergeant mm-hmm. Joe Friday by uh, I think Jack Webb is the voice actor for him. Okay. Um, I was looking at that. I was also looking to try to capture that kind of no nonsense but father figure esque kind of, I guess, command that like Captain Holt has on uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'm I trying. Can... I'm. I'm. Not, I'm failing. I don't have no. his, his no, glorious he's voice. He's no, it's good. He's it's doing good. fantastic. Trying. He's. He's definitely you. You delivered tonight. There, there are a few lines that <laughs> we had. Oh, yeah, oh tripped boy. up on some lines. <laughs> can, can we play I don't one know right what happened. Oh my like, god! Yeah, it's right here. Need I remind you both of the massive stack <laughs> I have in my bags? Um, <laughs> stacks on stacks of cases. All right, here we go. Denny's baby, endless. Run it again. Oh, God. And that was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. Oh, Never the again, me- please. No, the memories. Delete it. <laughs> Delete it. I also have to use that. Have to, I also have to use that excerpt right here about it. So how are you feeling about this whole process? If it's as detrimental as you claim it is to the court's case against Joukowsky. <laughs> <laughs> that runs. Okay. <laughs> We'll definitely be putting in the, that last line. That I would say that sums it up pretty well. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> but I, I hope that, you know, aside from all of that, I mean, it was, there were some hurdles, but we got over it. And all the material we got tonight was, was stellar. And oh, I'm having a blast with I, you guys. Um, that's great to hear, really, because for for anybody out there, again, who's looking to do this, regardless of what it is, your nice. pull for motorcycle. Nice. Oh my God, I swear. Some people, right? Clear. <laughs> Some people. I know. What's their problem having motorcycles? <laughs> anyway, um, where's it going at with that? Where is it, where is it going at with that? Well, thanks, Motor. <laughs> uh, you were talking about like people who want to get into this. Yes. For those of you who want to get into this, especially when it comes to something as intimate as studio work, where you have a performer on... A lot of people will say on the other side of the glass because in a lot of vocal booths and a lot of recording studios, you have a control room where you're recording everything and then the performance space. Uh, Your actor, your performer, your musician, whatever you will, their comfort is of the utmost importance because that means that they will give but also be willing to give the best possible performance possible. So so knowing that means that we've we've been doing a great job, which is always reassuring, and I appreciate you saying that. Um, and yeah, so what we, what we did tonight, we had a, we had a few lines that were, I mean, there's, there's a mouthful, man. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of pressure that comes with that particular role because I, I feel as though everybody, especially when they're put into a position, typically they're, they're, they're thrust into it, whether it's like a supervisor position somewhere, or it's actually being uh, the boss of somebody somewhere, wherever it is. I feel as though. Not a lot of people will expect it or want it, but it's just they end up being qualified for it. Well, actually, um, kind of speaking to that, just from my experience, like with doing security on the side, mm-hmm. um, and I say security, it's, it's basically just glorified public safety. Don't do that or line up right, over there. Right. But um, I think in terms of like gaining authority, like, yeah, some people definitely kind of stumble into it blindly. Or it's yeah, trust upon some people them, seek it, of course. It's I, I think the real mark behind, like, the success of that is whether or not they run towards it and embrace it. Definitely. Do you feel as though the character Chief Lance ran towards it and embraced it? I think so. I think so. Um, it's been difficult to try to find that, like, strict disciplinarian kind mm-hmm. of like, hey— I'm not angry. I'm not upset. I'm just a little disappointed right now. Thanks, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, Kev, like, I definitely wanted to come across as more of, like, almost a father figure, some kind of, like, patriarchal figure in that in that group. Yeah. yeah. And I think it makes perfect sense that you're not as authoritarian with these two. I think you would be with lesser, you know, people lesser on the lower on the totem pole within the precinct. But with those two, I agree completely. That was That was my take. And we had talked about it earlier, I think when you were out here setting something up or something, but we were talking about the character a little bit earlier. And yeah, I, I think that he does have a, uh, 
there is a certain connection. He still wants them to do their work and like, let's get through this. But like, come on, guys. He but he has them. a little bit of he has a little bit of uh, love for both of them. Yeah. I think you know. Yeah, I mean, I, is w- when working with them for a while. They know how to. It's like any relationship. Even if you don't really try, sometimes if you know the person, you you unintentionally will push their buttons or yeah. something like that, or something that you do will be more of an impact than say strangers will. Until you really get to know somebody, and and because everybody in the story is is pressured, has so much pressure on their shoulders to to you know to deliver, to do well with their job, even under these extreme circumstances. It's 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 having that balance between. Mm, we can't, I, you got, you need to have that sort of, you know, inspirational figure mm-hmm. and whatnot, but it's also just a matter of making sure they get the job done. Exactly. And, so, and that's what's nice because you're not their buddy. And I don't yeah. think it's coming across in your, through your performance that you're their buddy. You're still their boss, but that you still have, there's, there's still a connection there. I think it's a, it's a cool little dynamic we got going. Oh yeah. No. And I mean, so. I've, I've definitely tried to draw some experiences from people I've known mm-hmm. throughout, throughout my work history of, you know, being that I'm going to make it a very friendly, very affable yeah. work environment, but definitely you're going to get your work done. Right. Like we're not going to, I don't want to have words with you at the end of the day. Exactly. That's the idea. Yeah. 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 It's I the, think it's coming across well. It's the props master of, is that your <laughs> prop? Don't is it? touch it. Or put it away. Yeah, put it away. <laughs> if it's not yours, You're not don't touch scene. it. So what is it about Chief Lance that people can relate to? I think I think one thing that people could definitely relate to with Chief Lance, I think we've touched on it quite a bit, is how do you how do you exercise authority, be it in a law enforcement role or you know, even just in a fa- in a family dynamic mm. of where, you know, how light of a touch do you really need to get the point across? but still have a place where people want to come back to every day. Yeah. The, I think I think a lot of people, regardless of where they are in an organization or like a social group or something, I think everyone has that sense of this is more or less where I am in the group and this is how I should act towards others. Okay. Yeah. I, I feel as though that's, there's, uh, or it's, it's that rapport or where I am in the chain of command, how I should talk to this person versus how I should talk mm-hmm. to this person. Yeah. Relationships mean yeah. so much, but yeah, the, the other big thing I, I think that you kind of touched on right there a little bit was delivery. Uh, we were, we mentioned in a previous episode about even if you don't seem like it, or it's not you as a person, if you're really stressed or something like that, you might seem more off-putting mm. or, you know, you might be a little bit more short with somebody. And then it's all about, uh, you know, am I, am I being a jerk or is this the proper way that I should say this to this person? It's all, it's all a game really when it yeah, comes I mean, to I have, I have an communication. Uncle, I have an uncle that refers to as, as repackaging. Mm-hmm, like there's a really. truth. You're not going to want to hear it, but. So, I got to figure out the way mm, to yeah, make it palatable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. There's definitely <laughs> there's definitely an approach you can make it where it's where you you can say the same thing, but you can maybe be a little bit more sympathetic exactly, about it. Exactly. Maybe you can be a little bit more understanding. It's not just you know. Or, you have to say something mean, but you don't want to sound like a jerk. Right. I mean, you can't you happening. can't just walk up to someone and say, "Hey, damn, it's, you have an ugly baby." <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. It's like. Oh, oh so did you see the game the other day? Oh my yeah. gosh, it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! I said, that's that's definitely more of what I should have come for. <laughs> you have the child and it's breathing. <laughs> you've kept the long. You've kept it alive for how long now? <laughs> no. Oh man. Uh, so about about this piece, this is something that I've been asking everybody so far. Um, if this is something that a friend of yours or you're at the bar or anything like that, and you mentioned this to them and they ask about it and they would ask you, oh, why should I listen to it? What would you, why, what would you say to them? Honestly, I'd have to say, why not? Um, I was, I was always a fan of like radio plays and dramas and things like that, where there is no visual medium for it. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that we've definitely lost in this current day and age and, looking at it as like, well, you listen to podcasts, right? What about what about something along the same lines, but it's just strictly like a fictional narrative? Right. They tell a story. Yeah. Mm. It's almost like we're doing a radio show without the radio. It's it's weird trying to have to like convince people or tell people about it, where it's like, imagine a radio show. A radio what? 
Yeah, and then you Imagine have to explain that. Imagine a podcast, that. but it's it's a drama. It's a show. And then you mentioned, say, I feel, I find that probably one of the most popular, if not the most well known radio play, would be you know War of the Worlds, and then oh, everybody yeah, would say, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, the movie. And no, no, <laughs> no, no. No, um, I I would say if nothing else, what always seems to get people's attention more than anything nowadays is. So uh, I'm I'm working on this uh, podcast. It's like a ra- it's like a radio show. It's a nice narrative drama. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I mention there's murder? Murder. <laughs> Did I mention there's a mystery that's yeah. unfolding with every episode? <laughs> Tell me more. I mean, that's that's how I've gotten yeah. a couple people just like chatting right. it up a bit. It's it's that's a that's just a log line that gets anybody every time. Is this like this happened here? And- yeah. What's gonna happen next? Ooh, yeah, and that's 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 classic. Set them up to, and then just give them enough to to reel them in, and then so they can actually indulge in the story. So, what are you looking forward to with with the remainder of this this time on this production? What are you what are you hoping to uh, achieve? What are you hoping to do with the character? I mean, is there anything you'd like to gain personally from it? I'm curious. Uh, so a couple of things, uh, in terms of the production, I remember, uh, I pretty much stopped doing theater and performance arts altogether when I went to college, which I went to school for film, ironically enough. Um, I've been looking for an, a, a re not necessarily a reason, but a way to get back into the performing arts. Yeah. This has been a really great kind of channel for that. Um, in terms of the character, what I'd really like to do is I want to I want to do more work on getting back into acting and working on that craft again. And for for the police chief himself, I, I really want to get across kind of a, a warmer feeling, I guess, by the end of it. Of hey, you know, I, you guys are just fighting me the whole dang way about this. There's other things I want done. There's my objectives and your objectives, yeah. and how do I reconcile that? Right. How That's, can you how can you make everyone happy when most likely somebody somebody's going to suffer? But you're again another thing where when it comes to leadership, I find is that how is it that we can get as close to a zero sum gain as possible, mm-hmm. where everyone somewhat wins? Where, yeah, I mean, you know, nobody's harmed by it. Life life is really a series of compromises, and honestly, I'd I'd like to see what I can do with it to kind of put that into this. Cool. Like yeah. how do I how do I convey that in a very human way? Yes, yeah. definitely. I think that's something that anybody can relate to is how can how can I do this? How can I compromise without hurting myself or anybody around me way too much? Exactly. And how that's something into, we ask ourselves every day. And how do I put into a character that there there is dialogue for already? It's already scripted. Mm-hmm. You know, how do I convey that? That's, right. that's a great challenge Using I'm looking the, forward to the, finishing. The words as the vehicle for it, especially those phrases that you just really fell in love with tonight. Like <laughs> this one. <laughs> If it is detriment, if it is as dentri, if it's as detri, yeah, <laughs> detrimental. Detri- oh, it's I making know. me detrimental. Ah. <laughs> yeah, that was a toughie. Detrimental's making me mental. <laughs> what about dental? Toughie. Do I get dental working on this? Hygiene. Um, <laughs> I'll let you know how well the crowd yeah, right? goes. <laughs> Can you call my non-existent agent? <laughs> uh, yeah, my people will call your people. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, yeah, they'll, yeah. they'll be in touch. I got them on the phone tomorrow. It's fine. What if what if I don't have people? What are your people? That's the <laughs> We're best your part. Now. So I got news for you. <laughs> One yeah. last question for you, Mr. English. Go for it. Is there a Lucas for every language? And if so, is there a Latin one? Is and are they dead? I'm not at liberty made, to discuss an ongoing investigation at this time. I, I appreciate your question, though. I just made all Latin teachers cringe right now. <laughs> just a little bit, I think. Okay. Well, I think we're gonna call it there. Seth, you, <laughs> you look like it's you been guys. a it's been a journey. Has it? <laughs> it's, it's been, been quite the journey. Man. No, <laughs> it has been detrimental. It's been detrimental is all out. Uh no, no, no. Um, this is. This is another great recording session, and actually, it was a, it was a lot of fun to work with you. And looking forward to getting you back in here and finishing up this character. It's a pleasure. I'm looking forward to the next time I'm in. Yeah, yeah, man. All looking forward to it. Thank you for viewing this, that, but mostly that thing right there. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, the thing that's right there, that, that's the star of the show. Yeah. And we will have a puzzle in here at some point. Yeah. yeah. Just oh, like a jigsaw. Off. I miss yeah, jigsaw yeah, night. Yeah, 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 we've had a lot of analogies about putting putting. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna have a puzzle in here at some point, for sure. Next time yeah. Lydia's in here, I yeah. think it's gonna be we'll the final one. episode. It's gonna be three hours long. Yeah, 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 we're yeah. just gonna give just up at the end of it. Put a three hour tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, but yeah, thank you so much again for all that you've done and all that you will do for both of you. Thank you for listening or watching, whichever you prefer. Please. As always, follow Arcade Productions on all the socials, links down below. Not not physically, maybe, but you know, you know I where mean, it is. I, I could see it. I could see it. I could put here. it down there. There's some <laughs> links down there. Yeah, they're right they're right there. But yeah. Right, right here. <laughs> but thank you so much again. We'll see you on the next episode. Until then, take care. Yeah.